Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. And I want to be really clear about something before we get started. Today's video is going to feature us feeding an adult female ball python. One that I think is going to have a fairly aggressive feeding response, and I'll explain why in a minute. The point of that is, we're going to be feeding a live rat to a snake. So if you don't want to see that, well, thanks for watching just long enough to count the view, but you better dip out now. I don't want to hear any shit in the comments, okay? I'm warning you. I'm telling you it's going to happen. So if you watch from this point forward and then you make some comment, I'm going to probably laugh at you and make fun because, I mean, that's like, you know, there's a big warning sign and you win anyway, so I don't have to feel bad. All right, for those of you that are still here, what we're going to be feeding is our Firefly female ball python. Now, she's a proven breeder. You've never seen her, I don't think, on camera. If you have, it's been very fleeting. Why? Because we got her as an already proven adult. We got her from a gentleman, and, and I won't put names in it because I didn't ask before I mentioned this, uh, who had developed an allergy to rodents. So he just really couldn't keep his snakes anymore, and so it came to us via that. Uh, we're, we're selling off a, a large chunk of his through our Patreon page for charity, including, I'll show you what we're going to part with for charity really quick. This guy here. This is a snake we will be selling on our Patreon page here for charity, amongst several others. Uh, what that is is a black pastel spider, possibly yellow belly. I can tell you, looking right here at that coloration and the overall color, I would bet that the yellow belly is there. Just my feeling. But, uh... We're going to be parting with this animal for charity purposes. So, put you back. Sorry, buddy. But this female came to us not long after laying. With him having the allergy, making it very difficult to feed, it just wasn't going to be viable for him to get it back going. So we got it. Man, this thing eats like a beast. Without further ado, let's open her up. There she is. And as you can see, uh, she does have a name. Now, it does not fit our normal naming. Her name is uh, Basil. And the reason it doesn't fit our normal naming is in honor of him giving us these to raise money for charity and help our collection. We kept the names he had. So that one is Basil. The one I showed before is Isaac. So let's feed Basil a big old medium rat. So we're going to put it right in here. We're going to let that go. We're going to see what's going to happen. And I think I know. Well, that was about... <laughs> <laughs> so that was probably the most gentle feed I've ever seen from this snake. And what I mean by that is that rat kind of just ran right to it. And this snake kind of just went, oh, there you are. <laughs> and wrapped it up. But what we're going to look at, what I want to show with this, and this is not about watching the rat suffer. So let's talk about what's going on and what the snake is actually doing and what we're actually seeing. One, it does bite. The bite pressure on these is not great. That's just to get an initial hold and to be able to bring it into the coil. The coil is so strong on pythons, they did some studies with larger snakes and balls, admittedly you're talking Burmese pythons, where they found that the coil is strong enough that when the heart beats, the blood flow from the ventricles is not able to go out and instead it's pushing stronger pressure back into the heart, causing the heart to go into a rhythm that is not sustainable, which causes a very quick death more often than not with you have a good strong coil around the midsection, which we tend to have. So what you're seeing right now, see that leg shake? Yeah, I know that might be a little hard to watch, but that is pretty much just nerves going off. So this rat at this point in time, I would imagine feels nothing. Uh, so in the time we've been talking, and it's still gonna be fighting for life a little bit, you're gonna still see it try to convulse and breathe and do those things. But I can tell you if you watch humans die, they'll, they'll do the same a lot of times. But the receptors in its brain that would be saying, oh, this hurts, they're, they're, they're gone by now. Uh, the consciousness probably truly isn't even there. And if it is there, there's been so much panic uh, dopamine dropped in that little animal that it's not going to truly feel pain. If you watch, everything now is very just rhythmic. Uh, that's just going to be some leftover spasming. So the point I want to make is how constriction works. For the longest time, it was thought that constriction killed by, uh, and this was accepted in science. I would read this as a child, or as a young man, I guess, that they would crush, meaning that they would coil around you and as you exhaled, the snake would get tighter and then you would not be able to inhale, expanding your lungs, basically causing you to breathe by lack of, die by lack of being able to breathe. That would be a pretty slow and horrible way to go. And well, that is a possibility and you will see that when you feed these animals sometimes and it's very unfortunate and there have been times that you can do things to quicken that. Typically when they get a good wrap, and this is a pretty good wrap, you see it happen pretty quick. Uh, and that's kind of where the science came from, is they would find these pythons in the wild, 
and say, well, gee whiz, we know how strong rodent teeth are. We know how strong rodents in general are. They're pretty hardy creatures. Why are these snakes not all scarred up from the slow death that their prey suffers? It doesn't make a lot of sense. And that's why they started studying it and why they found that the actual death and ability for the rat to, to fight back or feel anything goes very, very quick. And that's why snakes in the wild or snakes that are live fed are not all scarred up typically. Do they have one or two possibly? Sure. But you think of an animal that has eaten once a week for five years, uh, it, it should be just mangled. They're not. That's why they're not. And as you can see, that thing is expired. So I'm going to close this back up so it can finish swallowing. Kurt, anything you want to add on that? No. No questions about how the constriction works and whether or not that's a quick death. No. You have, one thing I'm going to ask you, you have had the uh, unfortunate job of having to gas rats a lot, correct? So we sell frozen thawed rats. So we gas, you've gassed, would you say in the thousands yet? Yep. Of rats. Do you see this death being much slower than that from gas? No. So uh, time-wise, this is almost as quick as gas. Yep. Now I would say there's probably a little more panic and pain here if I'm, if I'm being blunt, right? Yeah. Uh, because there is a bite involved, there's a coil involved. I'm sure there's a oh shit moment for that rat. But all in all, and again, having your experience and what you have to do, do you see this as a much, you know, the way it's dramatized as such this terrible death versus gas being a fact? No. No, it's about the same thing. All right, guys, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.